Grüezi YouTubers. Here is the guy with the Swiss accent again. Testing batteries and rechargeable batteries is an important task. To save money and protect the environment, I want to be sure that I use the batteries till the end. This means in the first phase I use them in a flashlight or in other power applications. Afterwards, I still can use them in low power applications like clocks. But how to distinguish between the two phases if you find batteries in a drawer? The straightforward way is to measure the voltage without load and afterwards with a load of say 2 ohms to create a typical current of 500 milliampere. But this is clumsy and I want a simpler way. And I want a way which does not discharge the batteries during the measuring process. The normal way is to use an Arduino Uno or Pro Mini with a small OLED. Unfortunately, these boards are way bigger than the OLED itself. Wouldn't it be nice to use a smaller processor for the project? The A-Tiny series are exactly what I was looking for. Very small and cheap processors. Even compared with a Pro Mini, they are small. And if you want to go even smaller, you can go SMD. So the concept for my automated battery tester was born. It should use an OLED display and an A-Tiny and should be able to measure the voltage of batteries with and without load. This measurement should be done very fast that the battery is not discharged during the measuring process. Here is the prototype. I connect the battery to the two cables and the OLED shows two values, one without and one with load. This battery for example is capable to provide 1.6 volt without and 1.3 volt with load. This other battery still provides 1.2 volts without load but less than 1 volt under load and therefore cannot be used for power applications. However, it still can be used for low power applications because with a small load it will still provide more than 1 volt for a certain time. The device can be used for all sizes and also for rechargeable batteries. To build such a device with an Arduino Uno is not difficult, but can it be done with a small A-Tiny 85 chip? Measure voltage and current switch the load on and off and show the results on the OLED attached to an I2C bus. But let's start with the principle of the device. A battery has to be loaded by a resistor and this load has to be switched on and off. At the same time, the voltage has to be measured. The sketch is a simple loop. Switch the load off, measure voltage, switch the load on, measure again, and switch the load off to preserve energy during display. Now let's go to the datasheet of the iTiny to find out if all resources are here. Yes, it has four analog to digital converters with 10 bit accuracy and a precise internal 1.1 volt reference. So we can measure our two voltages even if we power the device later with batteries. And yes, it supports serial communication like I2C. But does this tiny chip have enough pins? VCC and ground cannot be used for the program. And pin 1 is somehow special. It is used as a reset pin. And it is quite complicated to use it as an active pin in your programs because you have to program and reset a fuse to use it. And programming fuses is not part of this tutorial. So we do not use it for this project. Pins 5 and 7 are dedicated to serial communication and are used for our I2C interface. Pin 2 and 3 can be used to measure voltages. We use them to measure voltage and current. Pin 6 can be used to switch the load off and on. 
To do this I use a small end channel FET. These transistors have very low resistance if switched on. This is important for this application since we want to charge the battery with about 500 mA. With Ohm's law we need a resistance of 2 to 3 ohms to create this load. In the prototype I use two 1 ohm resistors in series. Together with the FET and the cables the resulting current is about 500 mA. So we have enough hardware resources to do the job. But do we have enough software resources? I square C connections are not simple to be used. This is why we gladly use the wire library to do the job. But this library does not work on ATINIs. Fortunately, Adafruit provides a tiny wire library to use ATINIs as I square C masters. First problem solved. Now the second problem. Find a working OLED library. Again, two problems have to be solved. First, the library has to be small because ATINI85 only has 8 kilobyte of memory, which is four times less than the UNO. And most common OLED libraries are quite big. And two, all known libraries work with the wire and not with a tiny wire library. Fortunately, I found a library which is small and simple. But it is sufficient to display numbers, even big ones. And you can rotate the display if you want to mount it upside down. Point two was just work. I, I adapted the library that it uses the tiny wire instead of the wire library. Let's now have a look at the diagram. It consists of four resistors, an ATINI85, an OLED and a few connections. And here is the finished breadboard. The ATINI85 is so small you hardly see it. Everything is ready to be programmed. ATINIs are programmed differently than Arduinos or Mini Pros. You need a USB ASP programmer. In the web you find also many descriptions on how to make an Arduino Uno act as such a programmer. However, for me this is too complicated and I built a small programmer myself. One time the investment and now it is very comfortable. Do not forget to program once the bootloader. This task set the right fuses in the ATINI. It has only to be done once per chip because it will not lose it. The necessary code is quite simple. It follows the flowchart presented at the beginning of the video. I measure also the current flowing through the load but decided not to show it in the display. I only used it during the programming phase. Now I program the chip and test the thing. Especially the short time the load is active has to be tested. One way to do this is with an oscilloscope. Here you see the voltage curve during a measuring period. The time with load is very short. This is a very small load to the battery. After I had a working prototype I put it on a small PCB. It has about the same size as the OLED. In one of the next episodes I will show you the workflow I use to mill my PCBs. At the end I mounted it with some hot glue to a standard battery box. After the device is built and tested you can argue that it is not worthwhile to build such a complicated device to do this simple job. And you are probably right. But for me it helped to learn how to build small devices to be used in later projects. Small A-tinies and small OLEDs, what a wonderful combination. What kind of projects come to your mind if you see these possibilities? I would be glad to hear from you. If you want to be informed about the next episodes, just subscribe the channel. I hope this topic was interesting for you. Bye!